Hi, my name is Bella. My husband and I have been married for two years. I had a terrible time finding love until I was 27 years old. I went to an elite middle and high school for girls only, and then I went to a university for women only. After I graduated, I got a job as a receptionist at a big company. As you might expect, all of my coworkers were women. For most of the people in my social circle, business leaders would ask them to parties, but not me. I never went to those kinds of events. It was easy to understand why talking to guys made me so nervous that I couldn't even speak. People often told me how nice I looked, and I was asked out a few times. There were some nice nights at dinner, but they always told me, you're pretty, but there's not much else to you. Then it happened. The door to my fate opened. Can I ask Bella to go on a date with me? This is what Lex, who worked for one of our clients and always checked in at my desk, told me, since he would only give me his contact information. People around us thought we were dating, but it wasn't true. I just smiled at him when he tried to start a conversation, like I did with everyone else. I really thought I would always be single. But when he told me, everything changed. May I suggest that we begin our relationship as friends? That was my answer. Caught off guard, he nodded so excitedly that it looked like his head would fall off. He smiled as he walked into the office. I had never done that before. Questions like, want to have dinner? Had always been the norm. Up until now free tonight, but when I was with Lex, I didn't get that sense. I only felt love. I was so happy. I went on a few dates with him, but I was still nervous and didn't talk much. The moment I knew he liked me for who I was, I knew. Is it possible for you and I to be together? To the point of tears, he was so happy. All of this took place on Christmas two years ago. At that moment, I was very happy and thought I would always have someone so loving in my life. But there was a hole in his armor when his business failed. Now it's been two years and I'm 29. Lex, you should probably wake up now, I told my husband who was still asleep. Then I put on my shoes and left the house. I'm the only one making money for our family right now. My husband's business went out of business six months ago and he hasn't had a job since. It's been hard for him to find a job. This business is in a bad field and the economy is also bad. Sometimes he gets an offer for a job that pays only $2,000 a month, which makes it hard for him to commit to a new job. Even with all of this, I still support him. Our love isn't so shallow that it would fade if one of us lost our job. My pay has always been pretty low. We've never lived a fancy life. We rent a two-bedroom flat that is more than 30 years old. It's a 30-minute walk from the train stop, and the building isn't safe. But I was ready to give up a lot of things so that we could keep living together. I thought my husband might still be upset about his company going out of business. He had a few job offers, and I waited calmly because I thought he'd find a good fit and feel better. But my hope was short-lived and he kept getting worse, even taking out his anger on me by raising his hand sometimes as a sign of his stress. He didn't leave any permanent marks and I thought he must be hurting more than I was, so I put up with it because I wanted to help. Then after a few days he finally got a new job. He quit the business he was in before and went into a whole new one. He took the job because the new place was ready to hire him even though he didn't have much experience. I felt better when he got it because I knew I wouldn't have to be his hitting bag anymore. I thought he might be getting violent, but it looked like it was just a phase. He is now working hard at his new job and was even given the title of team leader. It's been a year and I just turned 30. I was excited about having kids soon, but the loving man I married didn't seem to be there anymore. I told you I like toast, now tell me why you make pancakes. Also take out the pit if you're going to serve fruit. Little things started to make my husband mad and he started saying mean things. Really? Do you need to talk that way, Lex? You're an adult now, I snapped back. Take out the pit yourself. I was getting angry. In response, he hit the wall with his hand, which scared me. I don't like to argue, but I know in my heart that what he's doing is mental abuse. Recently, I've tried not to upset him, but we've been fighting a lot. I'm tired of it. When he took it out on me, that's when I lost it. It looked like the stress of his new job was to blame. Soon enough, he was made team leader, which showed how good he was. Now everyone tells him he's going to be a department head very soon. He couldn't handle the extra stress, so he started hitting me. I wasn't an easy target. In fact, I quit my job at 30 to stay at home and raise my kids. When I got into my 30s, I'd always planned to quit my job as a receptionist and do something I really enjoyed. Since my husband knew this, I stopped at age 30 as planned. He doesn't seem to like it, though. Women need to work too these days, you should know that. My pay is enough to take care of both of us. Do you even value the people who have taken care of you? He moans while he eats, then gets his back and goes to work. I was there for him when he didn't have a job, so why am I being blamed now? That's when I started to mentally distance myself from him. When I got home one day, there were shoes I didn't recognize at the door. There was my mother-in-law in the living room, which caught me off guard. Well, mom, why are you here? My mom told me straight out, didn't Lex tell you? 
From today on, I'm moving in. This is something I've never heard before. Over time, I learned that my husband had suggested that my mother-in-law move in because she was lonely after the death of my father-in-law. Of course, no one asked me. While I was still shocked, my mother-in-law told me to start making dinner. It shows how valuable a housewife is to take care of her family, so she told her to get to work. Even though I was angry and confused, I went to the kitchen to make dinner. Then Lex's mother-in-law came in and said, Lex hates burgers. The food was almost ready. This is rubbish, she exclaimed. The dish was almost done when she threw it away. I was seated inside, but strangely, words failed me when I was faced with this surprise event. I couldn't say anything, so I just listened as my mother-in-law went on. She then started going through the fridge and cooking without asking. I finally calmed down and told my mom, hold on, I made a list of meals for the week and then went shopping. As soon as I said that, he dumped flour on my head, making me cough. I kept watching her make her food and then she told me to clean up. When my husband finally got home, he was thrilled to see the meal. Yes, this is the kind of food I want. It's better to eat fried food than salad, he remarked, walking past me happily to eat with his mom. My heart felt like it had been smashed and black ink had been dropped on it. At that moment following that, my mother-in-law continued to bother me every day, and my husband continued to hurt my feelings. I felt like I didn't belong in this house, and even though my husband wanted to be close to me, I couldn't because of the situation. As a 30-something woman, I have been putting off having a child because I don't want to have a kid with this abusive man. The last straw finally broke when my wife's mom asked me to take her to the hospital because she was sick. Even though I didn't want to, I had to take her to the hospital. But when I went to get her, a social worker told me to go to a different room. She said, you must be having a hard time taking care of the kids and doing all the housework by yourself, but taking it out on your husband and mother-in-law isn't good. It turns out that my mother-in-law was saying that I hurt her even worse. She had been to the hospital more than once and asked about me each time. It looks like she picked today to deal the last hit. The social worker blamed me because she didn't know the whole story. You should look out for kids and old people more, she said. During that time, our family hasn't had any children. When I was told I might need psychological help, I had had enough. You broke my rights, so I'll sue you. It's not you who was being mistreated here, it's me, I declared. I showed proof that my husband abused me and that my mother-in-law burned me on purpose. The social worker said she had to check with my mother-in-law. But I told her no and left the hospital by myself. Soon after, my husband and mother-in-law came home. My husband heard from my mother-in-law that I was mean to her. You're leaving me, you parasite. How dare you leave my mother? He shouted angrily. What kind of lie did my mother-in-law tell you? I asked. Based on her fake tears, I think she did it again. I was sick of telling her she was wrong, so I left the house without noticing either of them. I didn't go home that day. Instead, I stayed the night in a work hotel. I was lucky to have my wallet and cell phone with me, and it was easy to find a charger. I chose to avoid both of them for a while and not go back home. But as I walked by the house one day, I saw a woman in her 50s who lived across the street from our apartment. I haven't seen you around, she said. She also told me that my mom told her that my husband and I are going on vacation for about a week. When I heard that, I couldn't help but laugh out loud. Then I asked myself if not now when. I called the moving company right away and asked them to help me move out as soon as possible. It was a little more expensive, but I didn't have much stuff and the movers were able to get it all to my parents' house in just three days. Let's see how my husband and his mother react since they have no idea how much I've helped with the house. They put me down when they don't know anything about me and I won't forgive them. After moving, I went back to my parents' house because their house was empty. After a few days, my husband called me. Where are you, Bella? There is no one in your room. When my husband found out what was going on, he kept asking me where I was. I told him, not your business. By the way, I've already filed for divorce because you said you wanted to do it before. Sign them and send them in. After I hung up the phone with him, I stopped calling his number. After that, my life became peaceful. I did yoga, made breakfast, and then sat down with my parents at the table. I had lunch with my mom and dinner with my family again. That's how I felt comfort and happiness I hadn't felt in a long time. When I told my parents, thank you, they were surprised but happy to see me. When my husband found out I was at my parents' house, he waited nearby for me. When I saw him, I tried to run away, but he caught up and grabbed my arm. Call me, Bella, let's go home. Without you, the house is a mess, he pleaded. I yelled, help me, as his hold got tighter. As I was being helped, a high school boy in his sports uniform came by and called the cops. A businessman nearby also helped. Since the cops were there, my husband quietly left. But as expected, my angry mother-in-law stormed into my parents' house. How dare you make fun of my son in public? Oh, you and your family are a shame, she shouted. Finally, I stopped my dad from going up to them and told him what was happening. While I was doing that, my mother-in-law was outside our house making threats and even talking about defamation lawsuits. Dad was about to lose it and talk to her about it, but I stopped him. 
Okay, I'm ready to settle this, I said. I called my husband, who was standing next to my mother-in-law when the call came in. He told her straight out, I know you're cheating and I have proof. I'm going to sue you for abuse and get money when we get divorced. My husband became scared when he heard this. After hearing rumors that he was going to a hotel with a co-worker, I actually paid a detective to find proof of his cheating. I had a lot of proof. I even went to the hospital and got a note saying I was healthy in case they tried something. I had also recorded talks in case I needed proof. I was going to talk to my husband and his mother about it when I was mentally ready. But I'm not going to be quiet when they insult my parents. My mother-in-law has also been stealing money from my pocket. I've heard that the house is in terrible shape and even smells bad since I left. People in the neighborhood are complaining. My husband didn't know what to say. A friend told me this story. They said my husband and his mother were not in town. It looks like they haven't been doing simple things like picking through the trash, and the house has become a dump. Besides that, I heard that the property management gets reports every day about the loud fights they have. Now my husband might understand how much I helped the family and want me to return, but it's too late. I'm not coming back to live happily ever after with your mom, I declared. After I said that, I put the phone down. Soon after, my wife's mom tried to break down my front door. They were both arrested after I called the cops. After the fact, my neighbor told me that they hadn't taken care of any of the complaints through the management business. The drama finally got so bad that it cleared out the whole apartment building. The management finally went to court against both of them for not paying rent, ignoring complaints, and making business difficult. They were being sued for money damages. They were finally told by the court to leave and pay money for harm. They can't rent anywhere now because they're on a list of people who can't rent. It turned out that the rent wasn't paid because my husband made a mistake at work that cost a lot of money and cost him to lose his job. He quit his job and moved far away because he couldn't find another place to live in the area. He then ran into another problem when he tried to find new work. He became homeless which made his mother steal from stores. She was arrested for hitting a store worker who tried to talk to her. I heard about this in the news online. I have no idea what comes next and I don't want to know. When I got divorced, I started working at the coffee shop of my dreams. Someone I work with who is five years younger than me and I became friends. I got married again when I was 34. We opened our dream cafe when we were 40 and now I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant at a late age but I've never been happier.